Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Fire remains one of the most destructive forces on Earth. And while man has made many strides towards containing these blazes, the success of those efforts depend mostly on our ability to address the fire as soon as possible. But when it comes to aircraft and other heavy-duty vehicles, this is always easier said than done. Planes carry massive amounts of fuel on board. If a fire breaks out, it could be a matter of minutes before the blaze becomes completely uncontrollable. This is why airports keep special fire trucks and firefighters on standby at all times. Some countries have developed special airport fire training centers. These facilities are ideal for drilling firefighters on how to work as a team. They perform the function of first responders in the case of a fire on an aircraft or within and around the airport vicinity. There are a number of different vehicles and personnel involved in the airport firefighting process. One of the most important is what's known as a crash tender. These powerful machines are designed to maximize many of the qualities required in the event of an airplane crash. They are fast, and capable of driving over extremely rough terrain or even crash debris. Most are fitted with high capacity water pumps or foam cannons that reach over long distances. This keeps personnel safe while they attempt to extinguish a fire. Airport firefighters know just how important they are to the safety of airport staff crew members, and passengers. Though they are also airport employees at the end of the day, they operate more like a traditional firehouse than anything else. Most of them take great pride in their work making sure that all equipment is in proper working order every morning and running frequent practice drills to ensure the entire team is ready to tackle whatever situation is thrown at them. At Manchester Airport in the United Kingdom, they have an entire fleet of crash tenders. and they're ready to provide emergency services at a moment's notice. While these crash tenders can get to a fiery runway crash in just a few minutes, they are far less effective when it comes to fires that occur in the hangar. This is because the flames can quickly spread from the plane to the structure and vice versa. So to protect the millions of dollars worth of aircraft and equipment often stored in these hangars, Many airports have implemented foam suppression systems in the ceiling. When triggered, these massive units release a special fire-resistant liquid which prevents the blaze from getting oxygen. It also helps coat any fuel that might have leaked from the plane, drastically reducing its flammability. Despite the cost and the cleanup, these foam fire suppression systems are regularly upgraded and tested to ensure proper functioning whenever the need arises. We're going to test 4802, the high foam expansion uh, system. Today's test consists of the foam will mix with the water. It will go through the generators and it will dissipate through the floor. It has to cover under the wing within 60 seconds 
about 90%, and then it has to get up to three feet of the hanger in within four minutes. While fighting fires at airports and hangars can prove challenging, few situations are more dire than having a blaze break out aboard a naval vessel at sea. Many of these military ships function more or less as a giant floating city with thousands of people on board at any given time. Aside from the people, there is also jet fuel, munitions, and other items that could explode if exposed to fire or excessive heat. For this reason, many naval vessels train their entire crew in firefighting tactics. Rather than wait for special individuals to deal with the problem, everyone is appropriately trained and capable of suiting up, grabbing a hose, and putting out the fire as soon as it is noticed. When fires aboard a ship do manage to get out of control, you typically have a scenario similar to what happened with the USS Bonham Richard on July 12, 2020. After a fire began on a lower storage deck, the blaze quickly spread through the hull and cabins of the ship. All in all, it took four days for the U.S. Navy and San Francisco firefighting crews to extinguish the fire using a combination of fireboats, helicopters, and handheld hoses. Luckily, the ship was moored at a naval base and not out in the middle of the ocean during the incident. Even so, 40 sailors and 23 civilians were injured in the blaze. Fireboats like those used to fight the blaze on the USS Bonham Richard are not only integral to fighting fires aboard ships, but are helping cities located near lakes, rivers, and oceans to drastically improve their ability to address land-based fires. Their primary benefit? They pull water from underneath the boat itself, which means there's no waiting time while firefighters hook up to a city water line or having to worry about running out of water in the reservoir. Though most modern fireboats are built like tugboats, there are smaller, faster, and more maneuverable sizes that also participate in rescue missions. They help to get firefighting teams to the blaze before it has a chance to spread. By approaching from both land and sea, firefighters can minimize overall casualties. Be it on land or at sea, fires are responsible for billions of dollars in property damage and regrettable casualties every single year. Fortunately, Technology is allowing for greater preventative measures which mitigate the losses if a fire incident does occur. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.